the biggest one they cost is about 750, 750 pounds. And in Veracruz, well, the grander, it was 1,022 pounds. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? <laughs> okay. Because if God wanted us to have fiberglass boats, he would have given us fiberglass trees. It's, it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit as yeah. far as if I can remember uh-huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back, State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo. I'm joined with me, my co-host, Anthony Pino with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Today, our guest is Eduardo Maldonado from Tuxpan, Mexico. How you doing, bro? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the invite. Uh, pleasure. Everything okay from here. And you? Great. We're great. So tell us... Uh, Let's give a little intro about yourself, Eduardo. Well, I'm Eduardo Maldonado. I'm a 35 years old guy, fisherman from here, from Tuxpan, Veracruz, Mexico. And well, I think the, the podcast is about uh, letting you, you guys know my experience and my, my trajectory. I started fi- marlin fishing about six years ago, seven years ago. I started here locally with a good friend and a compadre of mine, Ricardo Moreno. We started fishing together. He had a lot more experience than me, so I can I can I can say that he introduced me to this world. And we started fishing in a 23 foot Robalo boat. We managed to get outside, tried jigging, fishing in the in the in the oil rigs here in Tuxpan. But um, uh, let's say like I started professionally or or I like to say professionally to go fishing a lot two years after we struggle a lot here in, in Tuxpan well let me just give you the old introduction first I'm a fourth generation fisherman here in Mexico my aunts my uncles fish uh, commercial tuna to export to United States and well I learned from YouTube uh, mostly pacula lessons um the spreads for marlin fishing from Bakula were a lot of experience for me. And of course, uh, like sharing all, my, all the knowledge between Ricardo and me, like we were the, the two fishing bodies that started here in Tuxpan. No one tell here... Tell people where, tell where that is uh, kind of location, I guess. Okay. Where would you say from Isla, you know, where, where are you guys located? We're located in the Gulf Coast, in the Mexican side. We're in the, in the middle of Veracruz. And Tampico, which is are the biggest uh, fishing cities in, in the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Um, the, the fishing area uh, difference from Texas is like 26 miles. And we have big, big, big marlin fishing, big fish, fish here, but not in big quantity. So let's say they, they have caught um, a grander in Veracruz. That's the only one uh, that, that came in, profe- in, in professional fishing. In the boats, my uncles have uh, gotten like uh, three or four granders that uh, without the head, they weight about a thousand, uh, about a thousand one hundred pounds. Without with, the head? Without the head. So wow. we get a really big fish around, but not many. So it was a, a really a good challenge to learn fishing from here because, I mean, it's not the same as going in, in Miami in the big season, in the nice season or Costa Rica or, or other big fisheries that you can get out and you get two, three or four strikes of marlins and selfish well. In big seasons, you get 20. Uh, this is not the case here. I mean, we have a, a marlin fishing season from May to, to August, September, and the usual is to get one strike a day. And there's days that you can go out two or three times and you don't get any any fish from, from or any strike from the from the area. So it was tough to learn from here. What about bycatch? Bycatch, the same. It's really, I mean, Tuxpan was a really nice area to, to catch tarpoon. My uncles are really experts in fishing tarpoon, but the commercial fishermen just ended with the tarpoon and all the bycatch in the in the shore in the shore area. So not so, much for for mahi or tunas or anything. No, there's not much. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough place to fish, but in the in the in the good months, I mean, we can get big marlin. So I'm um, here in Tuxpan. I can say we are the there are only two or three teams that go out and fish marlin. And in Veracruz and Tampico, there's a lot. In, Vera, in Tampico, I think it's the biggest uh, fleet of marlin fishing, of professional marlin fishing. Like uh, I can say there's over uh, 25 jacks and over 15 center consoles that go out there. Hmm. That's a culture over there. They fish every month, every week, sorry, every weekend. It's like Saturday is marlin fishing. So everyone gets out at the same date. And same hour, go out there, catch some marlins and, and out. And I think the Leo 
brought me to this uh, or gave me the opportunity to be with you because uh, here in Veracruz, Mexico, we have a, a set around or four tournaments, uh, big tournaments. And, we, and they develop, a, let's say, like a triple crown in Costa Rica. They develop a set of rules between all the four tournaments. And, well, the idea was to get a, a, the best team for the year between those four tournaments. And this year, we were pleased to win the, that uh, a prize. And we also, well, won the Masters of the Golf, of the Golfo, which is one of the biggest tournaments in the golf. And in the other ones, we, we, we were in the table, not the first places, but we, we always stayed in the fifth, fourth place. And in the end, with the last win, tournament win, well, we won the, 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 the triple crown, of Me the Mexican triple crown, let's say it. Yeah. When was that? That was uh, this September, September when, this year. What, what, so the, go ahead, Nick. I would say what? How many fish did that take to win? In that tournament particularly, well, we have rules in Mexico. We cannot uh, kill uh, a fish that doesn't weigh about more than 150 kilos, let's say at 300 pounds. So most of the tournaments, if we, we don't get lucky, I mean, it's it's all by release points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, in all the year, we didn't kill any marlin. I mean, I can brag that I never killed a marlin in my career. Uh, all the tournaments we were get the release points, and in that in this last tournament we released uh, two two marlins, and we got the 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 first the first prize. Wow! Gotcha. What uh what kind of boat do you guys fish on there, Usman? Yeah, well that's that was the story. We started in that twenty three foot Robalo, mm -hmm. fishing with my body. <laughs> we didn't have a clue. I mean, we were like investigating. I were talking about six years ago. We were investigating everything about reels sizes of reels the hook sets of the of which brands of lure or lures were the best i mean we i think we all started with black bar lures because it's the most commercial brand and from there well i i had the opportunity to fish with one of the oldest and, and better team in, in golf coast of mexico the the team moro which is located in tampico i learned from a lot from them from camilo curi and Antonio curi they they are really old fishermen and with a lot of luck and they introduced me to koya lures joji lures uh, like all the spread and i mixed this with all the lessons i took from pakula and everything i could find on the web and we developed the well or, or actual uh, trolling system with rages and everything we fish at the moment at a 42 boat a post 42 convertible mm -hmm. For, let's say from after i fish with moro we my father-in-law and i uh, bring the opportunity to buy the boat and let's start doing this in a more professional way you bought so, a boat with your father-in-law well actually he bought it i got you i put all my knowledge i put all my knowledge <laughs> into it let's say so we bought it in in miami pre-covid in 2019 yes we bring it to mexico and we start all the rigging. I mean, uh, step by step, we bought the dredges, we bought all the reels, uh, rods. I mean, we, we married with the 80 size. Most of the biggest teams uh, fish with 130 uh, reels here. Are you guys always fishing just for blue marlins or do you guys like fish for whites or sails too? Or is it all just straight lure fishing? Uh, selfish and white mar well, my marlins, is, I never catch a white marlin here. We mostly uh -huh. have sell selfish as a bycatch, but the most of the times where we go out looking for the blue marlins and whatever we got at the bycatch, well, it's okay. But yeah. mainly it's blue marlin. So we, we married with the 80s. I mean, it, I think it's a good size for tournaments because we can get a 600, 700 uh, blue marlin in, on the line and we have to be quick and, and secure the, the, the catch. Uh, we started fishing with 30 size because we were in all the stand-up fishing. But at the moment, well, we are in the chair I, we, we have to take a lot of trips to learn from, from what I wanted to share also is how do I get from the square zero to here? I tried to travel. I went to Costa Rica, to Los Sueños, to fish with the Maverick boats. Mm -hmm. I went once with my wife. We got a really nice weekend. Uh, we got one blue marlin, of around 20, 25 selfish, uh, massive quantity of mahis and tunas. And we got an amazing uh, fishing trip over there. After that, uh, well, in that point, I was married with Marlin Fishing, was addicted to it. So I tried to go out, out of here and we didn't have any, any luck here. I mean, it's hard, to, as I mentioned, to get Blue Marlin here. So we keep traveling. We went back to the fat trips in Costa Rica. We got 23 blues in two days for fishing, two days and a half, to two, 23 or 45. And all these trips helped me because, well, we got a big boat. It's not the same as a center cold salt, so... Mm -hmm. We, we need to start uh, learning how to, to captain the boat. In the yeah. boat, I'm, I, I'm the captain. 
I'm the one that moves the boat. We have uh, another captain that helps me with the, well, he's in progress of, of learning all the trips, all the tips. But at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm the captain and my father-in-law is the, the fisherman. Gotcha. Nice. So, so we make the like the dupla and well, we invite whoever wants to join in the team. We have a good friends in, in Punta Cana. That's why I asked you about the Sargasso, the Thunder fishing team. They are from Texas and they invite us to fish over there in, in these days. Yeah. And and well, all, all uh, let's say Costa Rica was like the, big, the best school for me because we got a lot of catch. We could see like the, all the movement of the boats, how to maintain the, the fishing uh, tight lines and whatever when you're fighting a fish as captain always to help the, the, the crew. And I think the change in the cake was uh, this year. The, well, just this year, I went to with my wife to Cape Verde. Oh, wow. We fished with uh, Stuart Simpson over there in the Niache Tro. And we got an amazing one week for fishing. We, we released an, uh, about 800 pounds blue marlin. And well, there it's like, a, as he called it, a Jurassic Park Sea. Mm -hmm. Because you see all the um, big waves. And well, that was a cherry the cake because Stuart Simpson, I think, is a really professional captain. He knows a lot and he loves to, 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 teach, to teach you how to fish, to teach you what to do in, the, in some kind of, of, of bad condition weather. And well, that, well, that was, was on, a, on my best trips because, well, it was an amazing trip. We got really big blues and, and it was really fun. Did you take yeah. a lot from what you learned from those two trips and put it into what you guys do there in, in Tuxpan? Yeah, Let, let's say that for me, it was four trips. The one with the Moro fishing team of here mm -hmm. in Altamira and Tampico because I learned how the, the local guys do it. How mm -hmm. they fish, how how the best team in the in the Gulf Coast fish. I mean, it's a simple spread, five lures. They don't use any teasers or whatever. So when I went to Costa Rica to the shore fishing and to the fat trips, mm -hmm. I learned the, the spread for the, from them. In the shore fishing, they use, I think, like fourteen rods, like seven hook hookless hook hook uh, balihus, mm -hmm. and lures with hooks, and like five uh, teasers, two dredge and, and another three teasers with no hooks it was i mean that was a really ex extreme uh, rig uh, build for the fishing so i mixed all this these rigs the last one was the fat trips which they fish like five lures with 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 hooks and two dredges so we mix it this with cape verde which they also also do well cape verde is really simple actually because they do like two uh, small uh, or short short lures or short teasers and walk one hook shotgun teaser in the center. And yeah. they only drop two dredges. So they only use three rods over there. And I, 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 well, I, I will I will always learn from them because I, I, I asked him, okay, why you do only, only you do three, three rods? You could throw five, seven. And they tell me, hey, we're marlin fishing. It's like hunting. They don't look for, it's a blue marlin always like to strike the, the lonely bait or the lonely teaser that it's away from the pack. So why would you all put a lot of, of lures in the water if I only need one strike? So I mix everything of this. At the moment, we, we develop a system fishing with five hook, hook, hook lures and two dredges. That's how nice. we fish. What's we the biggest? What, and, I mean, so you're fishing, you said one, you're basically one bite a day, right? Or you yeah. are? Yeah. Do you get any Texas boats that run like to where your rigs are or anything? Oh, no. The, the rigs we have over here are really near the shore. They are like um, 50, 60 meters depth. So we don't get the, the usual oil rigs of Texas. Okay, gotcha. But we have been, uh, well, historically, we have uh, oil rigs that move, that are, that are stay like two or three months in the deep waters. So we just wait to, like for one month that they build some life. And we just travel over there and, and sleep offshore near the area. Is that typically a lot like... Uh, like 60, 100 miles, something like that? No, it's it's like 60 miles from shore. Okay, gotcha. 60 miles. And the depth is above the 3,000, 4,000 feet. So it's a yeah. really nice depth. And so we get really nice fishing over there. We got a lot of tunas. I mean, in these oil rigs, you just throw the, the jigging rod to the water, start jigging. You can get uh, one tuna per drop easily. And of course, you can get the big blue marlin. We, the last time we went, we went with a friend, Andres Pineda and Ricardo Moreno, and we got a really big strike just arriving. 
We just throw the, the lures to the water. Five minutes after, we got a massive strike. We thought it was a really big tuna because it went down. But did it start running down of the water? We, we chased it with the center console big time. I mean, we were like speeding in 50 knots because he was emptying the, the 50 reel. And in the end, just, well, you know, this kind of stories of the fisherman, like it was 50 meters away and it, it broke the line. Yeah, so, but it was, I, if I could guess, it was above 450, 500 pounds blue marlin. Do you, ever, you never, you never try to catch like smaller tunas and then put them back out and slow troll them around the rig? Yeah, we didn't, but the next time, yes. I, I mean, I don't have much experience with live, live bait. But I learned in one of Los Cabos, they fish a lot like that. And in Cape Verde, the Stuart Simpson teach me how to rig them and, and try it. So the next time the old rig is here, for sure, I'm going to do it. Is the fishing similar in, in Tampico as it is in, in Tuxpan, or is it better or worse? In, in Tampico, it's better because they have a, a better floor, uh, okay. a, a sea floor. They have a really big mountains, sea mountains. Like, yeah, I was looking at them. It's like, um, let's say, 10 miles long sea mountains mm -hmm. that goes from 300 feet 200 feet to a thousand a thousand two hundred feet in uh, 0.5 miles so there is a very big spot to, to marlin fishing gotcha all the marlin tournaments i mean they, they have i like to, to talk about the tournaments we have over here we have a lot of teams that come from texas to fish to these tournaments uh, they're soon tampico one is the mucho bueno and the other one is the the jack club of tampico tournament most they are like one week week spread or two weeks spread so all the fishers man to come to this to one tournament could stay to the next one and we have a little uh, nice nice prices like i mean the the first place with all the the side bets and everything it's about a hundred thousand dollars wow second place fifty thousand third place twenty five thousand plus a lot of raffle prices and whatever and the same for Vera, for Veracruz we have the Jack Club for Veracruz tournament and the masters of the golf tournament so it's we have a, these tournaments are really nice how many boats typically fish them like between 50 and 60 boats wow wow I mean, we have uh, a lot of celebrities that came from the Vera to the Veracruz tournaments. We have uh, the team of, of Black Bart that came once. Uh, Steve Goyoni also came once, I think. I mean, we got a lot of, of people from the outside that come and, and we are promoting or trying to get more people from Texas because uh, from Houston to Tampico, we are like 100 mile, 150 miles away, I think, something like that. Yeah. So we're not like really far from, from the city. So we are trying to promote the tournament so more boats from the United States come and participate with us. Are there, and do you guys have a, is there a good number of charter boats in that, in your area there? Well, there's in Tampico, there's one person that is called Boris that has a lot of charter boats, uh, or if not, he could get with one. And in Veracruz, I think there's a guy called uh, Juso Barquet that also gets uh, nice boats and the Cubano. They always try, I mean, if you are coming from the outside, you can always text to the tournament uh, managers and they will get you a boat, try to get you the best tackle out there so, so you can just fly over here and, and start fishing here. Okay. How, they, have, they have a big marina there too? In Veracruz, there are like two big marinas, like first world marinas. I mean, in that's Tampico. Where your, and that's where your boat is? No, mine is in Tuxpan, Veracruz. It's a small town. Here we don't have a marina, but it's like pretty basic. I mean, the, the we only have two sport fishing yachts here at the moment, mine and, and friends of mine. And in Tampico, yeah, there's a lot over there. There's like 25 with power, short power and everything, all set up. And in Veracruz, we have really big marinas. I mean, they are really big jets. We have, I think the biggest one is like 80 foot. Um, we have all, all over there. They are building a third one. Uh, so for infrastructure in Veracruz, there's no issues. For Tampico, well, you have to, to secure your spot like in Putacana. You have to, to book your slip to get all the infrastructure over there. I'm just looking at the, the area there. It's interesting. I've never really heard much about the Gulf Coast fishing there in, in Mexico. I've always wondered about it. I know that I've heard that they've catch see, see some big ones down there in, in Tampico. Yeah, there, there's really big ones. And and of course, I, I want to share, let me look, look for a picture of the... Of the What's of the biggest the... fish you personally caught in your area there? In my area, we never got bigger than, I would say, 400 pounds. I, I haven't got the luck to get a, a really big one here. I mean, in Tampico, I think the the first the 
The biggest one they cost is about 750, 750 pounds. And in Veracruz, well, the grander, it was 1,022 pounds. Wow. How long ago was that, do you know? The, the one in Veracruz is like four years ago, five years ago. Oh, wow. In a tournament, actually. But the guy arrived late, so they had to put a, the, his fish aside. But they, I think they, they give a, a secondary price of, of, for them, for the, for the fish that they got. Oh, wow. I want to share like the, I don't know if you could see it, the, the trophy that they give over here. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, it's, it's all silver. It's a, like a $4,000 uh, trophy, $5,000 trophy. Wow. And besides that, they get the, the 100K uh, first place award. So, I mean, it's separate between the, the first day, second day leg, and they have all this kind of, of, of side, bet, side, side bets, just like the Bisbees. Like you enter all the all the steps you want, like five hundred dollars side bet, a thousand dollars. I don't know if they fish like that in Punta Cana. The side bets? Yeah. Yeah, I mean the tournament has you know your basic entry, and then they'll have uh, some Calcuttas as well. Exactly the Calcuttas. And they they actually did uh this year they did a uh, sonar division and non sonar division as well. Oh, that's nice. That's another thing we have. Well, we don't have many boats with sonars. We only got one, I think, in the in the competition, and we managed to to outpass them. Outpass them. So it was yeah. really nice. Yeah, really good achievement. Nice. The other thing we fish over here that we have big ones are swordfish. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. we started deep dropping over here. I got a good friend of mine that teach me the basics and 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 went with me in the fishing trips to teach us how to deep drop for sword fishing. And well, the biggest one. We got this was about uh, 250 pounds boated. Wow. And we missed a really big one that was of the size of the weight of the width of the boat. I estimate around $450 pounds, sorry, 400, 450 pounds. We missed it just at the leader. Wow. We, they, they, I mean, all the excitement and everything, they pulled the leader a bit and the swordfish just got the loose hook and, and swim away. Yeah, it was, but I mean, swordfish, it's a nice, I, since it's a fish that is not easy to to do commercial fishing on it, there's a massive quantity here. Gotcha. Interesting. Have you and caught then, any yet on your boat? Sorry? Have you caught any on your own, on your on your boat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, uh, one day we got four of seven swordfish. Oh, wow. Yeah, swordfish is something that if we go out, we got swordfish. I mean, oh, that's wow. a good fishery, yeah. And the other days, I mean, that was uh, the best day. The best that we have. The other days, uh, we always get like one or two strikes of, of swordfish in average. Yeah, that's yeah. more consistent than blue marlin. We also how's have the weather a there. Of... Is it rough or it gets calm or how's it? Well, we we have to look for dates. I mean, it's not like we can go there every day. We have to look for the best dates. Yeah. But in average, we go out with two or three feet with feet tall waves, and the bad days. We can get six to seven feet waves. And yeah. of course, we can get 13, 14, but we, we are not fishing, right? Yeah. 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 So um, is the reason, because in the guys in the Gulf Coast for, of, of the United States, they always say, I, I wonder, I ask them why they don't fish in the winter as much because, you know, the, the water is kind of always there. But like, do you, they, they just say that it gets too rough, but like, I always wonder because you say you're you're fishing basically the regular summer months May to August, right? Yeah, that's the, yeah. that's the like the marlin fishing months. Okay. Which the the issue we have here in Tuxpan, well, in the Gulf Coast of Mexico, is that the water gets green. Yeah, yeah. And since we are not that far aside from the from the shore, mm -hmm. we get green water in the in the best parts of the sea of the sea floor. Okay. So yeah. the marlin fishing goes down a lot. Yeah. We got some tuna fishing, but it's hard to fish it with uh, with lures or, or trolling lures. So, but aside that, we can swore fish all year. I mean, the thing with this, the winter months is that the, we have you have to look for pretty particular days to go out since the swore fishing, well, you have to do it. Uh, when with, it's calm. You know, yeah, when it's really calm. So, I mean, we, we could get like three or four times to get out in the in these months to, to try to fish in. So, mm -hmm. so it's not that bad, but you're not going to get the, the blue marlins. Yeah, yeah, I was just looking at the water looks, water looks nice up off of Tampico right now. I was just looking at a satellite shot for that air for your area. Yeah, I have a lot of friends over there that they are, but they are every, everyone is at the moment for fishing. 
I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone is going out. Uh, there's pretty good teams like the Namita fishing team. They fish uh, swordfish a lot, also a cucaburra. So at the moment, everyone is like, well, it's something new for us here in the in the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. There's like small teams that do it. Dinamita, Cucaburras, uh, the Curi team, the Pepe Curi, fish a lot of swordfish. And of course, in Veracruz, the Cachorro fishing team, they fish a lot of swordfishing, deep dropping and whatever, because, well, here is, since it's hard to get a blue marlin, well, you got swordfishing and you get dragon dragons and a lot of, of kind of, of, of big depth fish. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. I mean, interesting. I also have the opportunity to fish two. Well, that's a good story. I, I fished like two years ago the Bis Bis in, in Los Cabos. Yeah, we went out with uh, with my friend Ricardo and Andres and other other uh, friends from here from Tuxpan. We we didn't have the opportunity to vote any. We got a uh, release one blue marlin, but it didn't fit the the size. That tournament of the Bis Bis, no votes got any a voted blue marlin, so they returned us the the money of the tournament. And we were planning to, to go to the next year, but one of friends of, of, of the team said, okay, I, I want to go to with my family. If you don't mind, I will purchase your parts of the of the entry and I maintain the money. He did it and he won the last this year, no, last year bis bis. Oh wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they won it. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's like the is they the Brownie family. I mean, they were pretty lucky. They voted uh 450 blue marlin. And well, they collected really nice money. I like that you're wearing some billfish gear. You a lot of guys where you are wear some of the gear. Yeah, of course. Nice. I'm a fan. I mean, I've been using it for years. The pants, the first version, second version. I even use it <laughs> to to be here in the house, not only for fishing. Nice. And of course, the hats. Well, I have a lot of hats. From every time I see a, a new hat, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, bro. Ha have you had the chance to get any of the the new uh, teak gear? I haven't. Uh, we just got this custom gear. Oh, nice. Yeah, but the the last time we got the when we got this, since it's, the teak gear was new, they wanted to do more tests in the printings. So we printed yeah. in this one, and, and maybe for the next season we will get some in the teak in the teak gear. Yeah, for sure. And now you just need some uh, hooked optic glasses, hooked optics, and you'll be ready yeah. to go. Oh yeah, I I, I haven't uh, used that one. Hook optics. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like the new brand of billfish or. No, it's it's Anthony's. It's my uh, my company. Oh nice. My my family's company that we makes we make sunglasses. Oh for sure, I'm getting yeah. some. Yeah, thanks. Sir. And the next trip, the next objective for me is going to Australia. Australia. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to fish. I actually had booked for the next year for November with the. Uh, Kikoa. Mm -hmm. I can assume everyone saw it on Instagram with his amazing photos with Kelly Fallon and Luke Fallon family. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and we will try to go next year over there and try nice. the fisher, fishing over there. With that, I think my, my roulette of blue marlin fishing over the world is, is it got to an end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're fishing in some good areas. Yeah. I mean, Cairns, the Great Barrier Reef, and that is a historical place. I mean, I, I had the opportunity to buy from Lauren Miller. Uh, Lauren Miller is the, the the son of Black of Bart Miller, Black Bart Captain. He brought he she wrote an amazing book with the, all the story of his father uh, since his start to his end. Hmm. And I was amazed how he well he I didn't knew that he fished Cairns a lot of time, and it has a pretty amazing story. So if anyone's interested. Try to reach Lauren Miller in Facebook and you can buy the book from directly from her and it's an amazing read. Huh. That's yeah, I mean, yeah. Black Bart, it's uh, Bart Miller, it's an amazing captain and his story is, is amazing. I mean, yeah. for us that are addicted to blue marlin fishing, it's an amazing story. Yeah. And where, where has, where's, where's been your favorite place that you fished? Uh, I can say my heart is split between Costa Rica and Cape Verde. Nice. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Cape Verde is like an adventure. I mean, I don't know if you have been there, but since you arrive, I mean, it's a pretty small city, a little bit of danger in the outside of the capital. Yeah. So you have to be aware in the hotels. But as soon as you put a foot in the boat, I mean, it's an amazing adventure. You fish uh, out of, well, you get out of, of the capital and start fishing around the islands. So it's like a really small towns in the islands. You can arrive them by car. They're isolated from the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you can only arrive by jack or boat. And all the all the guys in the island gives their lives to fishing. 
they fish all day, uh, commercial fishing, I mean, just to, to, to get the food from them. And they have really nice crews over there of, of marlin fishing. And well, getting out every day, sleeping with uh, in the hotels with just a fan and with a, a really hot uh, weather. And well, Stuart Simpson was a, a really good host for me. And just looking at all, well, it's like fishing in Hawaii, I can assume. I never fish Hawaii, but it's like that. As you can see all the mountains in the in the in the sidelines, with a depth of five thousand feet, three thousand feet, just three or four miles away from the island. So it was an amazing adventure. Los, Los Sueños in Costa Rica is first world. I can say that it's like a United States colony. Yeah. So you get all the facilities and, and <laughs> yeah, it's like a colony. It's basically a colony. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. So you have like all the facilities. I mean, you go to the golf clubs or whatever spots. Cape Verde, it's an adventure. I mean, there's nothing in it, just fishing and fishing and fishing and fishing. And it's, uh, I think if I had to go back to a place to fish every year, it will be Cape Verde. So that's where you caught your biggest one. Yeah, the 800 pounder. Yeah. Wow. It was an amazing fight. We we got it in the in the teaser. Uh, the crew made a, a pitch bait, so they they did bait the 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 switch. The fish ate it full time. I mean, it just mm -hmm. started running. They put the strike on in an 80 in 80 reel. Uh, the, the the drag was about 30 pounds, and the fish just stopped. I could never believe it. I mean, I read about it on the web. Well, I, I never believe it. I mean, the fish just stopped uh, below the boat and it didn't move. It didn't knew it was hooked. So it was a pretty intense fight. It was more like a strength fight, not like the ones you have to reel, reel, reel. No, it was a strength fight because we have to be pulling the, the road just to make, to, to make some kind of movement that the marlin understood that he was hooked up and start moving. So we spent like uh, 30 to 40 minutes just pulling the drag up and the rod and fighting with the rod, the fish move a bit more and more and more. The waves were at six feet at least. So besides of pulling the rod, I have to be uh, grabbing from the chairs just to not, uh, I don't know, it was pretty intense fight until the fish start moving. I have a pretty good video in my Instagram about the, 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 the fish movement. And I mean, when I saw it jumping, well, it was a freaking monster. I mean, it was an amazing experience. And besides that, I mean, we got, uh, I didn't saw it personally, but we had a chance two times with the Grander. That's what mm -hmm. the captain told us. Uh, the two times were in the, in the shotgun hook route, in the, the hook lure. But as you know, the lure fishing is not easy. So most of the times, well, the, the hook rate is really slow. So the both times the, the fish went away. We lost it. One after the strike, just run like five, six, six seconds and it just blew off and the other one well it was like a five minute fight and the and the lure went off so i mean you really if anyone wants to have a good chance with a big fish you should go to cape verde i mean it's a really good chance to get the fish of your life and also the other one is is australia so that's why i, I want to go over there and, and try it does anybody try pitch baiting in in uh tempico or, or tuxpam or veracruz in that area did the guys try it Try to throw the any ballyhoo bait? fishing at all? Yeah, or ballyhoo I fishing. Yeah, like I try ballyhoo with with hook, but the the pitch and bait, I have all the equipment ready here to start you doing it. Look, I, I because as a steward, I mean, no one does it. The only team I know I know they do it is the Thunder fishing team. They're from Texas. They come with the, his boat to to all the tournaments of the Gold Coast, and at the moment they are sitting in Punta Cana for this season. I don't know if they come back the next year, but at the moment they are in Punta Cana, and they do a lot of pitch bait here. Okay. Okay. And and as Stuart told me, I mean the pitch bait is almost a, a secure fish on board. I mean you have to cut the line up. If well, if you do it right and they eat. Yeah. And the fish you eat it right, it's a hundred percent chance that you're going to boat or or release that fish because well it's pretty hooked it's hooked from the softer part of the of the fish, right? Yeah. Have you ever fished in Isla Mujeres? No, actually it's in my I mean, I mean it's I right down the end. road there. Yeah, uh -huh. it's it's in the in my in my wish list. Yeah. It's more selfish focused. Yeah, but but I want to go there. I mean, I have a good friends in Cozumel that invited me to fish in Cozumel, not to Isla Mujeres. Yeah. But at the moment, well, we are one month away from the season starts, and it should yeah, be yeah. really fun. I mean, they, they say the the seas are really rough. Oh yeah, it's rough as shit. You you been there? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I've how been, was I've, it? I've done, I think I did three seasons there. The sail fishing can be amazing. It's like really some of the best in the world. And it's the, it's really, really rough. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, it'll, you, you will learn a lot there. Like, I feel like, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm biased, but like, I think you, you could probably go and, and bally and fish with dead, dead ballyhoos and, in in Tuke's Bamba Ten Pico and do and do well, you know, and I think that's why, I think you could catch the the blues and you could catch sails, you know, yeah. you won't you won't have to you won't have to lose the sails on the lures. You probably get a lot of sail bites and eat the lures and fall off, right? Yeah, not that much as we wanted, but yes, we got some. Yeah. I mean, I fish, I fish, I, I usually when it's not tournament, I try to to get uh, four hooks, four lure hooks, mm-hmm. four lure with hooks. Yeah. And one or two valley hooks with hook. Yeah. Just to try to to get better chances of the bycatch. Yeah. Because well, you can think how sad it is to go there, spend all the fuel, all the consumables and everything, and don't get any bites. Well, it's insane, right? There's some point that your mind blow and it's just what I'm doing here. Yeah. But the tournaments are regularly really nice. So if you have very chances, I mean, you could come here fish with me or whatever boat you want, and we could get a really good time in the in the tournaments. Really nice. I yeah. also wanted to go. It's on my list. Also, I tried to go this year in January to a place called in Los Cabos, uh, the Finger. They called it the Finger Bank. The Finger Bank. Yeah. 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 This is the striped marlin. The good striped marlin fishing. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's not like Mac Bay, but if you get uh, to travel when the 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 sardine balls are in there, I mean, you could get. And you see 100 and 150 striped marlin release over there. Yeah. And it's closest than Magbe. It's just back and forth from Chicago San Lucas. It's good there right now. Exactly. My whole crew is leaving like tomorrow or the next day or something like that to go there, to go to Cabo and go wherever, either to the finger bank or all wherever they need to go. Okay. So they're going to Magbe now. Good. They'll go. I think they're right now. It's good enough to just to just fish day trips out of uh the out of bank. Cabo, yeah, out of the finger bank or something like that. I don't know how far they're going, but if it's like sixty miles or less, I'm sure they'll just fish fish day trips. But if it's yeah, if it's longer than that, they'll probably go up there. But yeah, it's pretty good fishing there. Yeah, the finger bank. Is, I'm never been there. I mean, I fish Cabo San Lucas a few times, but when I see the big numbers in the finger bank, I mean, I just want to go over there. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. That'd yeah. be cool, man. Yeah, thanks, Ben. How, how do you yeah. fish in, well, about, uh, get in the space a little bit of time. How do you fish in Punta Cana, Nick? Um, it is bait fishing. Uh, you know, two dredges, two teasers, and then two longs. And then, you know, depending on grass and fishing, you know, some guys do either two flats, one flat, or, you know, sometimes even no flats, just, you know, kind of teaser. preference. Yeah, and just kind of pitching everything, you know? And you go all the time to Mako or you or you fish over the nearest uh, shore to the, closest to the shore? No, always to Macau. Okay. Uh, Anthony fished more when he was there because he was kind of there in a different season. He fished a little more out front there, yeah. uh, I think, for the whites and stuff. We fished uh, Casa de Campo for a couple, for like a month. And then we went to Cop Cana and fished for, tried the white marlin thing. And I couldn't get that figured out. So we just went to, um, we fished the Mona Island, which is an island between Puerto Rico and the Dominican. And we just went to fish the same way, just for two long riggers. And typically just one, we just fish one flat line and two dredges and two teasers. So very, try to keep it simple. Is it a good season to go over there in January, February? January is still yeah, it can be still really good in January. Yeah, fe- fe- January, February can be good. We were I was there in May, April, March to March to May, and we had good fishing in in Costa de Campo around the corner to on the southern side of the island, and I really enjoyed that. We had like I don't know, I think we had like eight bites one day, eight nine bites, but we had like four bites four to four to eight bites every day blue marlin so it wasn't like like they have off of macau in the fall like now i mean i don't no, know no. i guess the is it good there now yeah i got you yeah, they're catching them pretty good i didn't yeah i didn't i didn't see the uh i know salmon last weekend caught 21 in two days or something you got you i didn't see oh, the the 21. monthly the monthly moon um 
what to call it? What's that boat saying? The boat that nobody salty can keep? fair. Yeah, the the monthly moon salt salty fair moon rigger shot. Figured yeah, they'd be, they'd they fished yesterday. After. They actually only they fished yesterday. They only caught I think they caught one for two on blues and two whites or something. Oh wow, nice! Um, I will try to go over there in January. The Thunder team invited me for December, but well, the dates are really hard with all the family things, Christmas and whatever. No? And yeah, it's good there boat. in January. Yeah, it's good. And you saw a boat in St. Lucia just caught twenty in a day. Yeah, that's in, that wow. guy's been getting them for the last like four or five days. Yeah, they're all fire. Yeah, January will be over there. Is there any other good island besides Punta Cana to fish for Republic Dominicana? Over there? Yeah. Um. Well, that's the not, main one for Blue Marlin. That that time of year. I mean, I'm. You can catch a blue marlin anywhere there, but it's definitely better better in Cap Cana and Punta Cana there that okay. time of year. I don't know. It's so rough there that there's not many places like in further down towards St. Thomas and everything. It's just so rough that I don't think they fish that often. Do they, Nick? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I don't I think I think St. Thomas now is pretty much probably done till till next season. So but... nice, yeah. I'm going over there. January. Let's try some luck over there. I never fish, but it's interesting. I mean, very good mission. The sargasso is, is it still there in January, or it's already it's done. There no, should... all the time. Yeah, it's all the there, time. But it's not the wor- It's not considered the worst month. So okay. the summer months are the worst, right, Nick? Yeah, like was it like June, July, August are brutal. I didn't think it was that bad but when I was there. When we first got there, it was practically unfishable. It was part of it. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. Just got to pick through it. It's horrible. <laughs> well, I think you'll learn a lot there, Eduardo, and I think you you could learn a lot that you could take, especially because there's you could move them. You could take a lot from there, from the DR. And Yeah, I'd be interested to see if you tried a lot of that style fishing back where you are and implied that and see if that got you any better uh, numbers. Yeah, curious. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... The thing here is just go to the best area that is there in the in the sea months in in between Tampico and Tuxpan. Yeah. Are you we able? Have, are you able to get bait if you needed to? I can. Yes. There's some. Uh, yes. There, there's some spots that you can get uh, some small tuna or even dead bait. I mean, you can get it from the commercial fishermen a lot. Can you? There's no you problem. Go, can you? Will, will Will they catch you ballyhoo if you wanted them to? Yeah. 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 For sure. I mean, right. we, we always we always try to fish with ballyhoo. At mm-hmm. least one or two, but uh, we haven't. I mean, we caught a lot of bycatch, not blue marlin, more bycatch like wahoos or mahis. But most of the time, they just eat it and rip it apart. Yeah, I mean, and since but we got we have to to teach the crew. That's the mm-hmm. biggest challenge. I mean, we, we got a captain and a, and a sailor here, and that uh, the sailor has some experience with blue marlin fishing. And we have to, te- well, we teach them the, the more t- uh, complex part of marley fishing, like leader and preparing the hooks and the, the lures and the spread and where to put each, each lure, what kind of, of, of shape of head you want in a pl- each place, that kind of stuff. But we, we the next step is, is teaching them how to do the pitch bait and more bait focused fishing, not only lure fishing, because the, we have to change the mindset. I mean, when you are lure fishing, well, you just throw the lures and wait for the bite doing bait fishing you have to be watching the baits all the time yeah and that's like the biggest challenge to teach them a new way to fishing because most of the time they get bored and they just sleep so yeah. they can do that when they do pitch baiting yeah. or something like that yeah 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 no sleeping exactly <laughs> well nice that'll be uh interesting to see how that works out for you i mean like anthony said i think you'll learn a lot down in uh cap Cana. yeah thanks bro yeah I'll send you a, a a message to see if you are over there. No, I'll be here. I'll be sail fishing here, but definitely message me. I love this. Hear how you guys do. Okay, perfect. Come yeah. with that. Well, cool. Well, we thanks, appreciate we, it. Yeah, we Eduardo. appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, we wish you the best of luck and hope to see some good reports from you guys. Yeah, thanks for the invite, bro. And I'll keep you posted. And you, Anthony, also. I'll add you to Instagram so we can be hey, in man. touch. Thanks, man. Sounds okay. good, man. We appreciate it.